Hi, welcome to Uncle Tim's farm. I'm Uncle Tim, and today I'm going to give you a walkthrough of my custom-built insulated vertical smoker, and most importantly, some lessons learned from the build that will hopefully help you as you plan your smoker build. Make sure to stick around to the end to hear the one main thing I would do differently. Okay, here's my smoker. This thing is a beast. It weighs well over a thousand pounds, and if you go back and watch my build videos, you'll see how I struggled to get it upright and on the wheels once it was all together. It was pretty touch and go for a few minutes. The dimensions of the smoker itself, starting with the outside measurements, are 28 inches wide, 30 inches deep, and 60 inches tall. The measurements inside the cook chamber are 24 inches wide, 26 inches deep, and 42 inches tall. The firebox is 24 inches wide, 26 inches deep, and 12 inches tall. There's a 2 inch space between the inner and outer skin that is filled with perlite for insulation, and all of the square tube framing of the smoker is also filled with perlite for insulation, but not the cart frame. The overall footprint is 30 inches deep, 60 inches wide, and from the floor to the top of the smokestack is 78 inches. The work table and shelf are 30 inches wide and 30 inches deep, and it's 39 inches from the ground or from the floor to the top of the cutting board. This is an IVS, or an insulated vertical smoker. What that means, if you don't know, is that the heat source is directly under the cook chamber and not off to the side like in an offset smoker. One of the main advantages of a vertical smoker is the space it takes up as opposed to an offset smoker. Since you don't have a firebox hanging off to the side, the footprint can be smaller. Unless, of course, you add on a sidecar like I've done. But even still, to have a smoker of this capacity plus all the workspace and storage in this small of a space is not something you could do with an offset smoker. One of the main disadvantages of a vertical smoker is controlling the heat before it gets to the food you're smoking. You have to have a good design to buffer the cook chamber from the heat generated in the firebox. This is a little simpler in an offset smoker, especially a reverse flow, as the heat has time to mellow a little bit before it hits the cook chamber. One of the ways to help with this is to build a reverse flow vertical smoker, and I know that they work very well, but that definitely complicates the design and build of the smoker. The way I handled this issue in my smoker was to put a quarter inch steel plate at the top of the firebox that stops one inch from the back wall. Then there are two inches of airspace above that, and then another quarter inch steel plate that covers all the way from front to back but stops one inch from each side wall. This way, the hot air does not flow directly from the firebox into the cook chamber but flows up, hits the first plate, then to the back wall and up into a 24 inch by 26 inch by two inch buffer chamber. Then it hits the second plate and flows out the sides into the cook chamber. This design helps mellow the heat a little bit and keeps the bottom of the cook chamber from being significantly hotter than the top. The temperatures throughout the cook chamber are surprisingly close from top to bottom. I use charcoal for the heat source and mix in wood chunks to provide the smoke. I may experiment with just burning wood to see how well that works at some point, so keep your eyes out for that. The charcoal basket will hold about 50 pounds of charcoal without any dividers and will maintain cooking temps for about 30 hours with that much charcoal. With the dividers in, I can get in about 40 pounds of charcoal and it will maintain cook temps for about 24 hours. For most of my cooks, I use 20 pounds of charcoal and that will last about 12 hours if I'm smoking at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I have installed an Inkbird PID connected to a small fan to control the temperatures. The fan is connected to a 2 inch ball valve that opens into the firebox. This system works very well. I found that it works best if I light the charcoal on the side away from the fan so that it is not blowing directly on the fire and pushing it across the basket. I start off with the ball valve wide open but as it warms up I start closing it down more and more. When the temperature gets within about 50 degrees of my target temp, I close it down so that it is just barely open. This keeps it from overshooting the target temp as it takes a little bit of time to get the temperatures to come back down. So now on to the lessons learned from the build process and from having cooked on this smoker many times. First, the things I would do the same. 
I would definitely build another vertical smoker of this design. The simplicity of the design and build make it pretty hard to beat. It also definitely takes up less space than an offset smoker of the same capacity. I really like the door latches that I put on. They work very well and were easy to install. I also really like the way it cooks food. So far everything I've cooked has been very successful and it holds a huge amount of food. The versatility is also nice as I pulled out some of the racks and hung summer sausage to smoke in it. Overall I really like the smoker and the quality of food that it puts out and in the end that's what really counts. So now on to the one main thing I would do differently. First of all if you go back and watch the build videos you'll see that I built a frame out of two inch square tubing and then attach the skins to that. I would most definitely not build a frame like that again. It did make for a simple build, but those square tubes transfer heat like crazy. Even though they are filled with insulation, the steel itself acts like a heat conduit from the firebox to the outer surface, and also like a chimney carrying the heat all the way to the top. In my mind, it defeats the purpose of having insulation if there's a direct transfer of heat from inside to outside. The centers of the walls are fine, but around the edges of the smoker, Wherever the tubing is, it gets very hot. If I could make only one recommendation to you, that would be do not, do not build your smoker using square tubing frame unless you are not concerned about the edges and corners of your smoker being extremely hot. Instead, I would do like I did on my electric smoker build and have there be no contact between the inner and outer skins except where they are welded together around the front of the smoker. This way, there is no heat transfer except right at the very front, and that is very minimal. Well, thanks for joining me today, and hopefully you found some useful information there. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, hit the notification button so you don't miss my next video, and leave any comments or questions below. See you next time.